Forecasting has fascinated people for thousands of years, and people have used lots of weird and wonderful techniques to try to predict the future. One of the early methods was using sheep's livers. I've seen one of these in the British Museum, and there's been hundreds of them discovered around the Middle East. They are clay models of a sheep's liver that were used to train budding Babylonian forecasters. And once trained, the a forecaster would carry with them a real sheep's liver uh, around and, and would use it to, uh, to predict the future by looking at the distribution of maggots uh, in the various parts of the liver. A little bit like reading tea leaves in a teacup. And you can see that the livers, this clay model of the livers divided into 55 different sections and each of these sections meant something different. There's even a reference to this in the Bible where uh, there's a description of the Babylonian king trying to decide whether he should attack uh, Jerusalem or Rabbah, another city nearby, uh, now in the country of Jordan. And it says that, uh, that the, the king consulted his liver carrier, the person who was, who was looking after this. Hopefully the software we have now has fewer bugs in it than one of these livers. Around the same time, Another famous uh, forecasting practice was uh, based at the Temple of Apollo in Delphi in Greece. And there the, the forecaster was known as the Delphic Oracle. And people from all over the world would come and consult her and she would tell them something about their future. Often quite ambiguous language, a little bit like horoscopes are today, so that people could interpret it in a number of different ways and uh, usually think that the... Uh, what had been said was accurate. Uh, in this particular uh, situation, the, there was a cave beneath the temple um, and there was naturally occurring ethylene vapors in the cave and they would come up through cracks in the floor uh, into the room in which she sat and she would actually be stoned on these ethylene vapors at the time she was making forecasts and that would help her hallucinate uh, and presumably say something that was, was thought to be prophetic. Sometime later, in the time of the Roman em Empire, uh, the Emperor Constantinus said, anyone who consults a soothsayer on account of curiosity of the future will suffer capital punishment. So it was, you know, it was a criminal activity to actually be producing forecasts at this time. And even in the 1700s in England, it was a crime to charge money for creating predictions of the future. So it's it's been considered um, criminal for for a long time. Hopefully these days we take it uh, we have a little more a scientific approach and we um, you know, we don't get into trouble for doing it. There's been also been lots of examples of some pretty bad forecasts. Here's one from the chairman of IBM in 1943, saying, I think there is a world market for maybe five computers, a uh, little bit under of an underestimate. The president of um, DEC, another computing company, said there is no reason anyone would want a computer in their home. Notice two things about that. He said it three years before IBM produced the first personal computer, and DEC no longer exists. Not a accident. Bad forecasts will often lead to poor outcomes for companies. Steve Ballmer, the CEO of Microsoft, said in 2007, there's no chance that the iPhone is going to get any significant market share. Again, a very poor forecast, and Microsoft didn't get into the phone revolution as a result. And more recently, the US president in February 2020, one month after COVID-19, became um, epidemic in the United States. He said, we're going to be opening relatively soon. The virus will go away in April. Of course, it took a few more years. So yeah, lots of bad forecasts. Uh, and we don't want to fall into the trap of doing that sort of thing in this when we're using this book. So we're going to explore the most reliable methods for producing forecasts. The emphasis is going to be on methods that are testable, that can be replicated and that have been shown to work over time. I hope you enjoy your forecasting journey.